Uh, perhaps it would have been impossible to deal with, uh, to friend, <laughs> to have friendly dealings with them or their leaders anyway. Yeah, no, I just took the route of, oh, they're war-loving people, so I will just murder them as it is. Oh, look at you! You're just playing the drums! I feel so bad for you! You're about to watch your Ashken get murdered. Probably nothing. You have slain one of my people, you must pay with your life. I slain two of your people. Yo, yeah, I'm still using my Daedric Short Sword just so that I can increase Yo, my, uh... You know, my... My skill with that, even though it is still a miscellaneous uh, skill. Just trying to round out my character a little bit more, as I've said before. I don't know what abilities they're using on me, what magic they're using on me. Blind. Oh, okay. Oh, he has his own spell, Wind of Ahaz. Oh, would you look at that? Your journal has been updated. Yeah, my journal's about to get updated again. Hey, short blade increased to 37. Not too shabby. Oh, no, he's trying to heal up, isn't he? No, I don't think so. Ahaz. He had... Saint kills Heart of Fire. Cast when used, fortify willpower, 20 to 30 points for 15 seconds on self. I'll be taking that. Wind of Ahaz. Oh, okay, so it was, uh... His axe. I mean, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but... That's cool effect. Ow! Ah, do I want to take it? Nah. Nah, can't be bothered. And Ulathpal. He has the War Axe of Aaron Amu. Uh, 33, 18, 5. Sells for 14, 50. Cast when used. Fortify strength. Sure. You know what? I'll take it. Now, what do you have to say for yourself, Mr. Drummer Man? Who's there? He's just very focused on his drums. I can respect that. Hanamu and Masarapal. Well, you know what? Let's just talk to the wise woman yeah, first. Hi there. Yes, Outlander, do you need my services or seek my counsel? Now, with the Ashkan Ulathpal and his supporters dead, we may consider the Nerevarine prophecies and how you might be named Erebenesim Nerevarine. Now, with Ulathpal and his supporters out of the way, it is a simple matter to be named Nereverine of the Erebenesim. All you need to do is persuade Gulakin Hanamu to become the Ashkan of the Erebenesim. Seek him out in his Gulak Yurt. Be prepared, however. Hanamu is not the material one would choose when looking to make an Ashkan. He may be difficult to persuade. He is the son of our former chief, Aaron Amu, but he is nothing like his father. His birth gives him a strong claim to lead the tribe, but of the many virtues required by the Ashkan, he lacks only three things, strength, courage, and wisdom. I'm going to have to take him on some sort of spirit quest, aren't I? So that he does become, you know, strong enough and courageous enough to be Ashkan. Wait, who's Yantis? Did I go into the wrong hut? No, I didn't. Hello, Hanamu. I spoke to the wrong person. No matter what Manurai says, I'm not interested. I don't want to be Ashkan. I don't care what she says, I don't want to be Ashkan, Dis everyone despises me, I'm a weakling, and a coward and a fool, I hate it, but it is true, I just want to be left alone. Come on, please, just just be the Ashkan, alright? Yes, I recognize it, Ahaz wore that amulet, Saint kills Heart of Fire, Ahaz had it from his father, and Ahaz's father had it from Kinitu Nila, and Kinitu Nila had it from Saint Kil, a great witch warrior, but what has that to do with my wanting to be Ashkan? Give Saint Kill's Heart of Fire and make a little speech. Yeah, no, it it should be his. It belongs to him. Thank you. Your lesson is clear. It is the amulet that gives courage in battle. And it is the idea of the amulet that gives confidence to the tribe. But it is the Ashkan who wears the amulet. The Ashkan who accepts the responsibility for the safety of the tribe. Who holds the fate of the tribe in his hands. This is a sobering lesson. And I must give it thought. Your journal has been updated. I'm very happy. To make your acquaintance. Me too, buddy. I believe he has taken the lesson to heart and will consider accepting his responsibilities as the Ashkan and consider naming me Nereverine. Oh. Alright, well his... His dialogue said the exact same thing as before. So let me talk to her and hopefully that will move things along and I just can't talk to him yet. Or I'm not supposed to talk to him again yet. Hey there. Yes, Outlander, do you need my services or do you seek my counsel? Um, 
If you persuade, if you hope to persuade Hanamu to become Ashken, you must find some way to give him strength, willpower, and intelligence. Hanamu is unpopular with the tribe, and he knows it. But if he bore tokens recognized by all the tribe as conferring strength, willpower, and intelligence, it would give him the confidence to accept the responsibilities of tribe leadership. The war hack, the war axe of Aaron Amu that you have, that is an example of a token recognized by all tribes. It is the axe that Hanamu's father carried when he was Ashken in Ulithpal War II. Perhaps if you gave that axe to Hanamu, it would give him the confidence of a fighter. Okay. So it wasn't as simple as just the, um, as just the, uh, the amulet. So I'm also going to take these gauntlets, just in case he wants those as well. Just, you know, to err on the safe side. No matter what Manurai says, I'm not, I, I'm not interested. I don't want to be Ashkan. Yes, I recognize it is the war axe of my father, the war axe of Aaron Amu. Ulef Paul had it from my father and carried it as Ashkan. But what do you want me to do? Oh, what does that have to do with me, with my wanting to be Ashkan? Give the axe of Aaron Amu and make a little speech. Thank you. Your lesson is clear. It is the axe that gives strength in war, and it is idea, the idea of the axe that gives confidence to the tribe. But it is the Ashkan who bears the axe, the Ashkan who accepts responsibility for the safety of the tribe, who holds the fate of the tribe in their hands. This is a sobering lesson, and I must give it thought. Please, I don't want to be Ashkan. Don't you understand? I won't be any good at it. I am going to be a complete failure, and everyone will hate me even more than they do now. Please, I just want to be left alone. Okay, so... Perhaps I just have to ask her every time I do this. Like, I have to be like, well, what do I give him next? Hi there. If you hope to persuade Anamu, give him tokens. By tokens, I mean well-known tribal heirlooms. Uh, such tokens are marks of power and distinction and might give Hanamu the abilities he needs and confidence. The abilities and confidence he needs. Okay. Strength, courage, and wisdom. So I gave him the strength from the axe and the wisdom of the amulet. A warm welcome to you. Uh Perhaps I just need to leave the hut is what it is. I can't do it in the same conversation. I don't want to be Ashcan. Please, I don't want to be Ashcan. What am I missing? What token am I missing? Is the question. Because I'm guessing that's the main thing. Well, Mountain Spirit. I feel like that would be what I should give him. Mountain Spirit, just from the name alone, it sounds like that would be helpful. Let me just search their bodies again. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Wind of a house. Oh, okay. Could have sworn I... Wait a second, didn't I... I gave him an axe. I guess I gave him... Well, I gave him his father's axe. That's what it was. Alright, listen. You're gonna be... You're gonna be Ashcan, alright? I'm not the Ashcan. I cannot name you Nerevering. Well, be the Ashcan. You want to be the Ashcan. Do what Manorai says, alright? Alright, well... Let me talk to her again. Hopefully this isn't just stuck in some sort of weird loop and I didn't mess this up. Alright. So it wasn't enchanted, that's why I didn't take it, but... Renabi has a unique robe called the Robe of Yordan the Wise. So maybe that's the last thing that I need. Uh, I'm not sure if I need to talk to the Wise Woman before giving it to him, but she might, you know, have something to say. You have the Robe of Yordan the Wise. An object of power like that is the sort of token recognized by all the tribes. Yordan the Wise was a wizard and counselor of Ashkan Asur Abanba. Sometimes I feel like they didn't bother to say some of these names aloud because the names just sound silly. It's like, oh yes, Mr. Abanba, a legendary Arabenism leader of long ago. I was handed down, no, it was handed down to Renabi through his family. Perhaps if you gave that robe to Hanamu, it would give him the wisdom of an Ashlan, Af Ashkan's counselor. Alright. Yeah, everything else just had enchantments on it, so I just didn't take that because it didn't have an enchantment. Hey, Hanamu. I don't want to be Ashkin. You can't make me. 
Yes, I recognize it. Renabi wore that robe. The robe of Yerodan the Wise. It was handed down to Renabi through his family. But what has that got to do with my wanting to be Ashken? Give the robe of Yerodan the Wise and make a little speech. Thank you. Your lesson is clear. It is the Ashken who wears the robe. The Ashken who accepts responsibility for the safety of the tribe. Who holds the fate of the tribe in his hands. Now, with Ulith Paul dead, I hold the fate of the tribe in my hands. And I must accept that responsibility. Thank you for your lesson. I shall be Ashken of the Erebenism, and I do not need the robe. You should keep it for yourself, and if you wish, I shall also name you the Nereverine. Thank you, George. I promise that, as Ashken, I shall do my best to amend the dark reputation of the Erebenism. And as my first action as chief, I now name you the Erebenism Nereverine, champion of the Erebenism and protector of the people. You must also go to the wise woman, Manorai, and get from her the seizing of the Erebenism an enchanted heirloom of the tribe, which shall be assigned to all Dunmer, the Erebenism have named you Nereverine. Well, thank you. See, I think you're gonna do just fine on your own. I don't need some of these items. But, you know, that's that's a problem for another day. God, the robes of Urodan, they don't have any effects, but look at how much they sell for, a thousand gold? You flatter me with your attention, Outlander. Oh, well, you flatter me, my good... My good Ashkan. I was gonna say Lord, but not a Lord. He's an Ashkan, but you know, probably the same equivalent for them. Don't walk away from me. So George, you are called Nereverine, and Hanamu is now our Ashkan. Many changes. Many changes. Well, now you're the Erebenism Nereverine. Now perhaps we shall see what that means. You've persuaded him to accept his responsibilities. Now we will see if he grows in wisdom and becomes a good and wise chief like his father. Well, I need. I need the, uh, I need the reward. Now that we have an Ashcan, perhaps the peace-loving Erebenism can grow into a prosperous tribe again. With my counsel, perhaps Hanamu will grow to be a strong, wise leader like his father. I have no counsel, Nereverine. We are both traveling in the dark. So Hanamu has accepted his responsibilities as Ashcan and has named you Erebenism Nereverine. Congratulations, and I must also give you the seizing of the Erebenism, a tribal heirloom that ought to be held by our chosen champion as a token that we have named you Nereverine. Here, take this enchanted token of the Erebenism, that all may know that we have named you Nereverine and champion. Let's take a look at the effects on that baby right there. Where is it? The seizing of the Erebenism. Ooh, telekinesis, 50 feet for 30 seconds on self. That's kind of cool. Don't know if and when I would use that, but I like having that a as an option. Welcome to you. A warm welcome to you indeed. Now, you too, indeed. I just realized you're not wearing shoes. It's kind of dirty in here. It's literally dirt. You might want to put some shoes on. I do want to try and get back to Firewatch, and... Well, the first time I got to Firewatch, it was by accident. It was because I tried going from Al Daedroth to the nearest, uh... Imperial Shrine, which was in Firewatch, but I forgot about the mainland and that it would take those into account, so I thought I would be going to Sagerth Mora, when indeed it took me to Firewatch instead. What I'm trying to think is what boat I would take to get into Firewatch. Because I know there's a boat at Molech Mar. I'm not sure where that'll take me. My guess would be I can take a boat to Molech Mar, uh, from Molech Mar to Sagerth Mora, from Sagerth Mora, hopefully up to Firewatch. If not, then... That's where I'm just not sure. The only other thing I can think of is if the Mages Guild has a guild guide to Firewatch, but I don't know if Firewatch has a Mages Guild. Or at least, you know, a Mages Guild in it. Ooh, wait a second, what do we have here? Looks like we have another Ancestral Tomb. Let's see which one this is. Maybe I'll uh, venture on inside. Marin Ancestral Tomb. You know what? Why not? Love me a good dungeon dive. Let's put my shield on. Okay, that's my bad. That was my fault. It said trapped, and I just uh, didn't really pay attention to that. Hello, skeleton. Don't mind me. I'm just going to check this dead body real fast. Orcish tower shield. It sells for 2,000 and a second barrier belt, which... Shield 10 points for 30 seconds. Eh, not that important. Not that useful. Look at the face on that tower shield. That's kind of cool. Also, at least this guy knew how to fight off 
undead. He brought a silver sword, so we got that part right. He just apparently was not capable of fighting, you know, the goddamn bearded skeletons. <clears throat> Weren't exactly hard, but... You know, just perhaps... Perhaps he was not the greatest fighter in the world. Lock level 10. Alright, I can take care of that. Real easy peasy. I said real easy peasy. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. I said easy peasy. There you go. You just gotta say it a little angrier. Hello? I just, I heard skeletons everywhere. I was like, where, where are they? This guy's not a huge fan of me. So something that I meant to talk about in an earlier episode of Morrowind that I just didn't get around to was... Uh, because I sometimes look up just lore and stuff just so I know what I'm talking about, what I'm referring to, so on and so forth. And I did see some stuff about the Nereverine uh, specifically. Let's cast this for me. Wonderful. Let me, uh... Yeah, you know what? Once is enough. I don't think I even have enough magicka to cast it again. Potion of Burden. Potion of Burden. Wait, would that make me... be able to carry less? It sounds like a terrible idea. But I was curious just about some of the lore, you know, in regards to Nerevar and the Nereverine. Because one thing that I didn't entirely understand is how... you know, the Nereverine would necessarily be... Reborn to any race, any, well, either gender, uh, any class, so on and so forth. Because, I mean, I guess it makes sense in some ways that he would be, but I would also think it's like, well, the Nereverine should be a dark elf. Just as I'm sure there were a lot of people who assumed that uh, the Nereverine should be a dark elf. And by people, I mean, you know, Ashlanders and people... Like that. Oh! That's a bone wood. Uh, but there's a great little picture that I'll put up on screen. And it is... You know, it essentially shows the, uh, the death, the betrayal of the Nereverine at the hands of, um... You know, of the Tribunal, of Sothaseel, Vivek, and Almalexia. And what it shows is... Uh, the Nereverine's face being taken from him. The Nereverine's hands being taken from him. And... Oh, his face... Hands... And I think heart. I'm gonna say heart. And essentially, the idea behind those being taken from him is that, oh... Uh, his face... Well, I forget what each one means, but it was... The combination of them meant, like, oh, he could be any race because, you know, he is now faceless. I'm just going to kind of give my thoughts on what they would all line up to be. He has no face, so he could be any race. He has no hands, so he can be of any discipline, and no heart, so he can be of either gender. Although the, the gender... The gender and, um... The gender and heart one can be swapped, I'm sure. I guess heart would make more sense as, uh, I will for race. Either way, I thought that was a cool, like, touch as to how that's clarified and why it's made so that you can be, you know, whoever you want to be in Morwen and still be the Nereverine. He keeps healing, I don't like it. Can you stop that? Oh, that's a big axe. Oh, that's not an axe, it's a hammer. <laughs> Okay. Okay. We got him. Alright, so what does this man have? Bloodworm Helm. Armor rating 53. Condition 589 to 600. Values 34,000. Cast when used. Turn on dead 20 to 30 points for 30 seconds. And 20 feet of target. And summon skeletal, skeletal minion for 30 seconds on self. I'm taking that. I got excited because I thought he had the helm of uh, Orin Bearclaw. Orion or in however you pronounce his name, and I got real excited because... Because that's a cool item. I know 
of it from Oblivion, but I've been told that is also in Morrowind as well. And it looks like the exact same model, so... Or at least how I remember it looking, so I got excited. It might also be the same model, for all I know. Extravagant Star Amethyst Ring. Let's take that. That's right, I need more things. Oh, yep, that's my bad. I saw it was trapped, I just was not paying attention. That's my own fault. It's amazing that I don't die sometimes. Nordic Bearskin Curious. <laughs> armor rating of 1. Well, it's light armor, that's why. Let's take that, uh, that emerald. That emerald. The emerald. Wait. Boom. Got it. Alright, lovely. And that is that. I was just checking the urn to see if there was any gold inside. There was not. I could check all the urns, but... Yeah. Why bother? You don't have enough magicka to cast that spell. Well, let's drink a magicka potion then. Why don't we? There we go. Beautiful. So yes, I'm gonna head back towards Molagmar and see if from there I can get a boat... Uh, eventually out to Firewatch, so we'll see. Even if I don't take a whole lot of quests from Firewatch, I would at least like to explore it a little bit, see it a little bit, since I haven't done any of the mainland stuff yet. But I think it's about time that I branch out a little bit. I was talking about going to, uh, to Soul Slime and stuff like that as well. Because like I said, I just am not in a rush to get through the main story content. I'm having so much fun playing Morrowind. This really is... My first time playing this much of Morrowind. Before this, I've played all of maybe two or three hours just for fun. Maybe a little bit more than two or three hours. But, um, as of the day that I'm recording this video, I have 72 hours in Morrowind on PC. Which is just crazy to me. Like, that's, that's three full days already. Like, goddamn. Sure went by fast, is all I'm gonna say. Obviously, the whole playthrough as... <laughs> A whole is not 72 hours long we're on what part 60 60 yes part 60 that's today everybody I know what I'm doing I'm know what I'm recording but there's a lot of stuff that you know gets cut out I've said before a lot of stuff that's edited out I go back into the game to take screenshots I go into the game to test things to make sure that the game is running stably etc 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 so yeah 72 hours I think that calls for a little bit of a celebration I don't know how we're going to celebrate that. I'm I'm just going to go get a beer tonight. You should get a beer, too. Everyone get beer, unless you're not 21 yet, or you don't drink. In which case, well, I'm still having that beer. It's going to be good. Alright, so after looking it up, there really isn't an easy way for me to get to Firewatch. I can't take any of the boats pretty much on the mainland to get directly to Firewatch. I would have to take a boat from... Vardenfell to get somewhere else on the mainland and from there get to Firewatch. So it's just something that would be very not time consuming, but I think the fastest way would ironically just be if I went back up to Voss and used another scroll of divine intervention, ironically enough. Which is just funny because I went from Firewatch to uh you know, to the mainland by boat. Which is why I'm just surprised. Um, but you know what? No. What we're going to do first is we're going to head to Vivek. We are going to speak with the Arch Cannon because... I mean, why why delay? It's not the end of the game if I go and talk to the Arch Cannon now. Why, well, now the question well, is... Well, let me just take a look at the quest. I must also go to... Alright, I spoke with her. Spoke with the Wise Woman. Yes, yes. So let's go here. Let's go to quests, and let's go to Hortator and Nereverine. Alright, Archcanon Saryoni, High Archcanon of Vivek. In the event that I become the, both Hortator of the Three Great Houses and Nereverine of the Four Ashland Tribes, Saryoni invites me to a private meeting to consider my claims. Once I am Hortator and Nereverine, I should speak with the Healer of the High Fane. Largest Tribunal Temple... Alright, Pilgrims travel from all over Warren to view the High Fane and the Ministry of Truth. Alright. So let me just find my way to the High Fane, which, you know, walking through Vivek always takes about a thousand years or so. So let me just go and find that on my own. 
All right. As always, walking across Vec, just getting from the start of the city over to the temple takes forever. But I'm pretty sure this right here is the High Fane. It is indeed. I don't think I've been into the High Fane before. But I just, you know, I was able to kind of figure out where I was going. George Nereverine. Patui! Lies and superstition. Alright, alright, I get it. I just need to find... Well, I need to find the Arch Cannon. I need to speak with... The healer here at the Arch Cannon. Uh, not Arch Cannon, here at the High Fane. Well, can I ask her about the High Fane? Because that might help me out a little bit. High Fane! And she just gives the generic response that everyone else does. Yes, out there. Ah, the what Shrine of Saint Nerevar! Would you like to make a donation? No, I'm not gonna make a donation to myself, to my own shrine, essentially. Shrine of Saint Delvin, Shrine of Saint Felms, Saint. Lothus, Shrine of Avex Fury, Shrine of Saint Maris. I just want to look at them. I just want to look at all the shrines. Saint Rilms, Saint Rorus, Saint Olms, Saint Aralor, Saint Seren, and Saint Veloth. Hello there. Welcome, my child. Do you seek to join the temple? I don't. I feel like if I ask you, though, you're just going to be like, George Patui lies in superstition. No reverie. You're the one they call the Nereverine. You are a heretic and all who support... You are heretics. You may think imperial law protects heretics, and you may be right, but some of the temple faithful care little for imperial law. Well, that's great and all, but I am still looking for, uh, the healer. Someone in particular. The important people in the temple compound are Arch Cannon Saryoni at the High Fane, Beryl Sala in the Justice Offices, and... Elam Andis in the Office of the Watch Veterans are in Veteran Compound, and Talvani and Talvani Compound of Halalu are in the Halalu Compound, and but also in St. Delon and St. Olm's Cantons. Imperial Guildsmen are in the for Foreign Quarter. Some fighters live and train at the Arena. I am aware of the Arena. I have fought in the Arena. It did say to find her in the High Fane. Did it not? Need to find. What do you think of our city, Outland? Need to find the healer. The question would also be, what do I ask her once I find her? Although I assume that she would have a specific line of dialogue, be like, "Oh, it's you, the Nereverine, here to speak with me. How good, how kind, how wonderful, indeed." You know, one would hope. Hello. And you also hate me. Well, you know, I'm used to it by now. I just need to find the healer. So I found her, but when I talk to her, she says, No, didn't you read the note? Until you're named Hortager by the three houses and Nereverine by the four tribes, there's no point in discussing your claims. Now, go away before someone sees us talking. But I am Nereverine of the four tribes of... I'm never going to find them on the map. Of Erebenesim, of Amusa of oh god what was the other one up here what was the one urshalaku um and zainab i'm i'm good with them and i'm good with the three houses okay no nope, i think i know what it is i have to go back to urshalaku to the urshalaku camp and i have to speak with the wise woman there because she's the one who's guiding me through all of this. I probably have to talk to her and she's gonna give me something or tell me something about, you know, how to deal with the Arch Cannon because she doesn't know about my plan to meet with the Arch Cannon. So, well, that's gonna be the next thing to do. So I better go and talk to her. Oh God, I've got a long ways to go. I'm trying to think of the best way to get up there. I'm guessing the best way is probably if I get up to Margon and then from there I just walk as per usual.